Mojang, please. I'm already severely addicted to the crafter. My social life is ruined. Nobody's seen me in days. And now, just one week later after adding this game-changing block, you introduce a new redstone component. A redstone component that has the potential to be even more game-changing? And that may seem ridiculous, because you know, the crafter, the crafter crafts things. How is that not more game-changing? And while I agree, it's very game-changing when it comes to well, crafting things automatically, is extremely useful for automatic farms. Outside of that very specific use case, doesn't really have much use in broader redstone contraptions. Whereas this thing, on the other hand, a toggleable redstone component that is also movable by pistons, well, that is... I mean, this... This is going to change a lot of circuits. Potentially. I don't know. I haven't really played around with it yet. I've literally just just installed the snapshot. These are my first couple blocks that I've placed. Like always, I'm just going to play around with this thing for the next few hours. See what comes out. T flip flop. Well, that was easy. Um, that's the T flip flop done. <laughs> to put that into some perspective here, this is sort of the average T flip flop. This is the one that most people would use if they were to build a T flip flop. It's, it's pretty big. There are smaller ones than this, but I mean. There's none smaller than this. It's literally a single block T flip flop. And I hereby name it the cop flop. <laughs> it is the cop flop. If if any of these pop up in any redstone builds now, they have to be referred to as the cop flops. And if you want to be really fancy and use the full name, it's the copper flopper. Button selector panel. Again, this one, super simple. Every single one of these buttons you press will stay activated and we'll get a redstone output from them. But what if you wanted the button selector panel to have only independent outputs? By that, I mean only one button can be selected at a time. So say I press this button here, it would turn off that button. Okay, let's have a think about how this would work. So, brain. They're transparent blocks, which means I can't run redstone outputs through them which actually makes them quite useful. It's frustrating in times like these, but it does mean that if I run something like a, a strong power source into the side of it, like this repeater running into the side of this block is not also going to affect that copper block over there. I think I've actually started with quite a challenging thing here. Okay, this is totally broken, but it is making a very satisfying noise. There's a chance that something like this will work. I have had to play slams in front of the lamps, but I honestly think this looks really good. And... I mean... That seems to be working, and it's quite satisfying. And of course, it's super easy to take an output from it. So if you have some kind of storefront and you want a button selector panel, this seems like a good option. The only issue is, like a lot of button selector panels, uh, it's not spam proof. Green, you stay away from this thing, all right? Let's go back to the basics quickly. As I was building with this thing, I realized I, I kind of don't understand the fundamentals of it. So obviously it's a transparent block, toggleable, movable with pistons, which is pretty cool. Does it redirect redstone into it? No, it does not. Now I'm incredibly curious when it gives observer outputs. I imagine, yeah, so it will give observer outputs when it's powered or unpowered. So pretty similar to something like a dropper. And if I was to give this thing two powerings in quick succession, firstly, it toggles on and off quickly, okay? And secondly, it gives two redstone outputs. Okay, now this is unlike the redstone lamp, which actually takes a little bit of time to switch off when it's depowered. So let's get back to building. And I have a special something for you. Just place this block here and... Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's the good stuff. <laughs> I think we can all agree that was incredibly satisfying and you should do that. It's not very often I ask for this stuff. Now, if we actually pop back behind here, you can see it's not even that difficult to build. Uh, all I did was just put a bunch of lines of observers and then behind each one of the letters I want blanked out, I just... Well, I just removed the observers. But actually, now that I think about it, I could do this in a really, really cool way. So I'm just going to quickly replace all of the observers. This is yeah, this is a bit of a pain, but I genuinely think the effect of this is going to be well worth it. Now I just replace all of the bulbs. I'm sure some of you can see where I'm going with this. Hook it up to a relatively slow redstone clock. I think, I think the slower the better on this one. And let's see how well this works. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> That's really cool. That's super cool. I I'm I mean that you would have been able to do this with redstone lamps. Yeah, probably. Maybe. I don't know if you could have done to be honest with you. It would have been tricky. And this is cool. <laughs> that animation is so smooth. And what's really cool about something like this is you can actually just switch it off and then you can change the message to whatever you like by just powering 
all of the lamps that you want to be different. And then the next time you switch it on, it will have changed the message. I can now imagine on the Hermitcraft server someone making an animated advertising business. You pay a few diamonds for your custom billboard that will stay up for a few weeks, and then it gets changed whenever someone hires it. Just remember, please subscribe. I've put the S back because it was actually annoying me. This is kind of unrelated to the copper bulb, but I've been messing around with the slash tick command. You see, we can now change the tick speed of the game to whatever we want. So I'm currently playing Minecraft 20 times slower. Everything is running slower. Look, over there, that redstone clock, that is running 20 times slower. And this is gonna be super useful for diagnosing issues in fast redstone contraptions. And also I can set the tick speed to something ridiculously fast, which is very good for diagnosing issues in redstone farms that I guess would fill up over time. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, because I just did all of the commands for creating a working super hot in Minecraft. If the system detects you moving about, then it will set the random tick speed to regular Minecraft speed, but otherwise it will be really slow. The only issue being the tick rate command doesn't seem to be currently working in command blocks, which is a real shame because I love super hot and I thought this would be fun. Now I have these stupid armor stands following me everywhere I go. Right, let's get back to the bowl. So I have made this double piston extender design, which makes use of the bulbs to power the top pistons and it all works pretty nicely. You can stack them up next to one another. It's tileable. Okay, that's not true. It's not quite tileable. If you power them at the perfect times, then it does break. It's also not flush with the ground. I mean, this thing isn't perfect. We can connect a bunch of these things together to create a binary counter, which is incredibly satisfying to watch and can be useful in certain circumstances. So a good example is something like this, where we've connected up all of the binary counters to one singular redstone line. So this redstone line will only activate when all of the lamps switch off, which takes a lot of time. That means that a ton of inputs have to go through the system before we get that, and it should be coming up relatively soon. There it is. So this is great if you want something to happen very occasionally. Like if you want something to activate every 50th button press or something, then this could be the way to do it. I've created this little combination lock, which is functionally the same as a lever combination lock, but it works with buttons. And instead we have lamp indicators to tell you which ones you've pressed. And the cool thing is once you've finished inputting the combination, it wipes it automatically. That was always my biggest gripe with lever combination locks. I would just walk off leaving them with the combination on full display. This system fixes that and it's not massively complicated and it's quite cool in the way that it actually works. I definitely think there's a smaller way to do this AND gate though. You know, this block reminds me of something. I remember when this little thing was introduced, the target block. Probably one of the most redstone changing blocks that has been added in the past couple of years. When it was introduced, I kind of had a hard time communicating how often these were going to be used inside of redstone contraptions for the simple fact that they're solid blocks that redirect redstone lines. You can see I've used them here. This wouldn't be possible without this. The challenge with a block like this is that there's not actually that many contraptions that have the target block as a hero of the contraption. It just fits really nicely within basically all contraptions in Minecraft. Unlike the crafter, that is very much a hero of the redstone contraption. The whole point of the redstone contraption is the crafter. Things like the target block, the observer, and now the copper bulb aren't really going to be the hero of the redstone contraption generally. They're just going to be a fundamental part of it. It's funny because I'm actually probably more excited about the copper bulb than I am the crafter, but I think in terms of video creation, the crafter addiction is going to be in full force and will continue for a very long time. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye, bye, 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 bye.